When is this China bans Bitcoin FUD finally ever going to go away? Well, I can tell you, but you won't like the answer, I don't think. Another day, another 40% plus market crash, depending on what you're looking at. Obviously, our dear Doge father, Elon Musk, tweeting negative things about Bitcoin and energy consumption and all this kind of stuff might have something to do with the continued downtrend. But there was for sure a crash. And of course, here we go again. China. Back to China. Apparently, China announced some new restrictions on cryptocurrencies and how they can be used in commerce and things like that. This sort of thing caused the markets to just tumble to a huge extent. Now, of course, a major nation, in fact, probably one of the biggest economies in the world for a long time, announcing some kind of thing like this, some kind of restriction is always going to have some sort of a ripple effect on whatever product, coin, whatever you want to call it, is out there because, you know, a big part of the economy might be gone, right? But this China... FUD is specific to crypto, more specifically Bitcoin. And you think after a decade of this, we'd be past this, but yet we're not. I mean, these dramatic drops still happen every time there's some sort of a rumor that something's going on with China, China bans Bitcoin, it's all over or something like that. You'd think that after, you know, it didn't happen a bunch of times or until the ecosystem diversified a little bit. And you just think that people wouldn't care as much anymore. Like, oh, well, this sucks, but we got the rest of the world. Not so. So why is this? And why won't you like the answer? Because <laughs> the answer is there's a lot of truth to the FUD, I'm sorry to say. Of course, the FUD part of the FUD is, oh, China's going to ban Bitcoin. And everything is going to be over. It's not quite like that. First off, they're not going to just completely cut off one of the largest and most fast growing assets in the world. And two, as a decentralized asset or ecosystem, in the case of the rest of cryptocurrencies, you can't just have one country ban it and it just goes away. But where's the truth in it? There is a significant amount of Bitcoin's infrastructure, governance, security model, economy that all revolves around China. And people do not trust the government of China to play fairly or play well with, and basically let the ecosystem go where it may. Those two things are what are in the backs of people's minds all the time when they're ready to just start this big mega dump whenever they hear some sort of little headline about a crackdown or something like that. Those two things are truths that are in people's heads. Let's start with the second one because I'm a little bit of a backwards individual. huh? Second one being you can't trust the government of China. Well, course. I mean, you can't trust any government. And the more authoritarian, the worse. And the government of China is shown to be quite authoritarian in quite a lot of ways. And if in any way Bitcoin starts to enable too much capital flight out of the country or starts to make other nations too rich or whatever it is, they would not hesitate to ban the whole thing. And of course, Bitcoin use in China is not the thing that is really at play here. It's the infrastructure of course, it's it's a lot harder to just suss out whoever is like running a node here or whoever's sending money there or buying a thing there. It's a lot harder to do that. But what's not hard is to locate a giant warehouse that's glowing like the flipping sun with just all these machines just collectively mining the crap out of Bitcoin. It's You cannot really just hide that that easily. And so the government going after and cracking down that kind of thing is a very real possibility. Almost all hash rate is based in China. I mean, it's a little scary just how much it is. And it's like, well, who cares? Other miners will pick up, whatever. Well, remember not too long ago when a miner got flooded out and then 25% or more of the hash rate dipped and all of a sudden Bitcoin was unusable for weeks. Fees spiked to record highs. The Lightning Network wasn't really even working because people couldn't really open channels. A lot of the more popular user-friendly wallets were disabling services due to high fees. It was just a complete, you know, complete chaos. And imagine if that whole thing happened on a larger scale, of course. Now, of course, the big threat from all hash rate disappearing from China at some point, the problem is the profitability thing. Can you sustain this level of Bitcoin price action with non-subsidized electricity and things like that? So that becomes a little bit more difficult. Of course, the network would still work. There just would be fewer miners. The real problem is not banning or getting rid of the stuff. The real problem is the threat of control because in the Bitcoin ecosystem, miners essentially reign supreme. Now, they're not exactly super uh, communicative about a lot of issues. Depends on which mining pool you're talking about and which issue. But Bitcoin relies solely on miners to process all transactions, to secure the network, and to decide governance. 
So if there's some big problem like, oh, let's raise the block size or let's implement this other thing or whatever, the miners take care of that as well. And so it's not, well, what happens if the Chinese miners just disappear and then it's only the miners elsewhere in the world that can take care of all this stuff. I mean, that would be a huge disruption. It would cause a lot of profitability issues for a while and stuff, but things would get over that. The problem is the economic incentives of Bitcoin, the way they've shaken out in the modern world, place a lot of this control directly in China. And what's to stop government officials from just putting the metaphorical or very real gun to the heads of mining pool operators and just starting to influence them, just starting to say, oh, why don't you censor some of these transactions? Oh, well, why don't you support this proposal, not the other? Why don't you prevent that hard fork or whatever? And at that point, that's a lot more difficult to do anything about. At that point, you have to be building up massive amounts of hash rate in other countries and other jurisdictions and just try to turn them on at a huge loss to compete with the Chinese miners in order to sort of battle that kind of a thing. But really, the miners are Bitcoin. Let's not forget the manufacturing of mining equipment. I mean, how hard would it be to form a resistance in some other country, so to speak, without manufacturing of Chinese ASICs, of miners? It becomes just another step, another difficulty, another reason why all power started to concentrate in one country just because economic incentives worked out. So how would this actually change? Well, first, you'd have to actually change the incentives. There would have to be some sort of a breakthrough in mining technology or something like that so that another country, another jurisdiction starts to have better incentives to be a miner than China. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the shift starts to move that way. And even then, I don't think it would go way without a fight, but that's still, you know, a start. There would have to be people making intentional decisions to move infrastructure away to you know combat things to run things on renewable energy or whatever basically there would have to be a concentrated effort to move all that stuff away now of course other projects out there like let's say ethereum right moving to proof of stake pretty soon other projects that are already on there of course that's not without its own challenges and issues but it does make it so it's not as necessarily China focused. Of course, if a lot of people in China happen to own a giant amount of funds and start staking there, that's that's something else, which you know could be for a currency such as Ethereum that has been mined for so long. But anyway, hybrid models, like let's just take the dashes and the decreds of the world, will probably also fare a little bit better because first off, miners aren't even the majority of the security provided by the network. And second, they don't do the governance, really. It's an explicit governance by stakers or voters or whatever. And so it just it's still a big pain in the butt. Their miners still have a lot of power and stuff, but it's just not that super majority. Everything's going down. You can lose a giant chunk of hash rate permanently and still have a just as or 95 percent as secure of a network despite that because of the staking or masternode element. And you know, just works out a whole lot better. It's just not as scary. But Bitcoin's not going to change. So that's going to be the one, and its children that also don't want to change, are going to be the ones who are most affected by this long term. So when is this ever going to change? As long as China remains that top spot for mining, and as long as Bitcoin remains at the top, this will always be a threat. And the only ways you can change it, I mean, change out the Chinese government for something much less scary, not gonna happen. Change the incentives so that another place is much more incentivized to mine and gains in hash rate and all that. Unlikely. There's a shakeup in the crypto markets and the ones that are China reliant are the ones on top leading the market. That's much more likely. But as far as the Bitcoin related China FUD, I honestly kind of think it's here to stay. So better get used to it and diversify and hold on to your butts. <laughs>